well, transitioning into the NFL, I hope there is enough room on this tape to mm. talk about this next game. Mm-mm-mm. The Titans, our hometown Tennessee Titans. I don't know how to say this other than embarrassed, embarrassing, god awful at home against the Cardinals, allowing Chandler Jones to walk through and sack the quarterback five freaking times. Parker, you were there live. Give us your take live from the field. Oh, God. I don't even know where to start on this one, fellas. Um, Since you set the Chandler Jones one up for me, I'm just going to go ahead and say five sacks from Chandler Jones in one game is more than 25% that the Titans had all of last year in 16 games. The offensive line was an absolute mess. All of them. Taylor Lewan gave up two sacks. Gave up five pressures. I know he only played four games last year. You know how many sacks he gave up last year? Zero. He was not good. I know it's coming off of an ACL, um, so maybe he's got to get back into the game and things like that. I could go on and on about this one. The uh, From the game day experience to the offense, the defense, the line, you name it, I could do it. But the game, it was never close. The atmosphere was sucked out of the building. I left in the third quarter, and I never – I mean, I've left a game early. I've been going for over 20 years, maybe three times, maybe. It was just so disgusting. I couldn't – I just couldn't – I couldn't sit there and watch it. Taylor Lewan said on Twitter, he said, I got my ass kicked today. No way around that. I let the team and the fans down. Thank you, Chandler Jones, for exposing me. They will only force me to get better. I mean, this this, I, this is a guy begging for forgiveness. Dude, I don't think that he's been right for a while. I, I gotta I gotta ask Parker, what is your opinion of guys that go on social media like this to try to gain? They do little shit ass stunts like this, trying to gain sympathy and points from the fans. Y'all are gonna love this. So when I saw this tweet came out, I looked at my wife. And what I said, I don't know if I've told this story on this podcast, but one time I ran into Taylor Lewan in a bathroom. It was hilarious. We were standing at the urinals next to each other. And I just happened to glance over at him because, you know, this is like six foot seven guy standing next to me. And he looks over at me without missing a beat. He goes, don't look down. You'll be disappointed. <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> well, don't look at him past pro. You're going yeah, to which is, which is Which is hilarious. I looked at my wife and I had to give her that back up <clears throat> for explaining what I said. I looked at her and we go, you know when T- uh, Taylor Lewan said that to me in the bathroom? Chandler Jones would be able to tell Taylor Lewan he wouldn't even be able to pick his up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> it was embarrassing. <clears throat> the whole offensive line, you, you know, they, they signed new people. They drafted new <clears throat> people. But who's the right starting right tackle? You got Quisenberry, who was one of the worst grades from PFF last year. I know he's played better. The whole line was a joke. And – I get Taylor going online, why, why he does that. That's his brand. I mean, he looked like a podcaster out there and not an offensive lineman. Dude, I mean, so <clears> – pardon me. <clears throat> pardon, but but that shit choked him up. Yeah, I mean, I just think that it is – you're just pandering. You're trying to get people to give you some sort of sympathy there. Yeah, it's his brand. Whatever, dude. Well, you know how you make your money. You make your money out there on the field – you need to shut the up, and you need to get out there and play football. I mean, you know what this looked like? This looked like a bunch of assholes who hadn't practiced together. Oh, we know they haven't practiced, right, so, Parker? They've been telling us all off season they can't get them all together. The timing the looked terrible. The freaking routes were terrible. Derrick Henry is getting tackled as he's being handed the ball. You know, Ryan Tannehill is trying to run a bootleg, and he has got – Freaking J.J. Watt coming off unblocked because Quisenberry can't get off his fat ass to get a block <laughs> on the guy. You know, and we don't we don't put a tight end over there because we don't have any G.D. tight ends. Before you keep going, but this is not, not the player's fault. All the player's fault, right? Mm, I mean, no. the GM was so cocky that he thought, hey, you know, I don't need a right tackle. I don't need a tight end. I'm just going to go throw some money at – Julio Jones, and what did Julio Jones do? Well, I mean, look, I'll tell you what Julio Jones does. Whoa. You know, Derrick Henry finally does break a nice little runoff. And then, you know, 15, 20 yards down the field, we got Julio Jones getting into it with a defensive back. 
15 oh, yards, bring it back. Boy. And you know what? I would love for someone to tell me what it was that Mike Vrabel had to say about that. Parker, did you hear that today? What Vrabel said? Uh, Vrabel did say he was disappointed about, about oh. Jones. But uh. he said it like that. I put this loss firmly at the square of Mike Vrabel. I came on here in the preview and praised Mike Vrabel about going into t- games where he had times to prep. This was the exact opposite. I don't blame John Robinson. He did he did draft a, a, a right tackle, and he did sign a guy that there's not it's not that good. Uh, <laughs> God, he <laughs> drafted Rabel, a player last year that never played one snap in the NFL. Well, that was the worst, yeah, worst draft. Pick I'll, I'll go by saying that, but but uh, Vrabel, this is coaching. This team is not this bad. You don't lose by 25 points and have four of the best skill positions at their positions in the NFL. Like, you just do not. I know people are on the offensive coordinators and the defensive coordinators. You know who hired those guys? Rabel hired them. Robinson. The, pl- the, the play calling was also awful. Yes. So, tit- so Titans have got Bagley over here <sighs> who, who can't make an extra point. Mm. We'll go for a fake punt in our own territory, which was fine. I was great. I was like, hey, need a spark. Let's get going. But then you roll Bagley out for a 46-yard field goal on like fourth and three instead of going for it when you're down by two or three scores. That was one of the loudest I've ever heard that stadium boo <laughs> the Titans when that happened. And it lit up. It was so bad. After the game, I talked to my 74-year-old mother, and her first question was, why did they not go for it there? My, my <laughs> don't, mom, don't get Mama P riled up. <laughs> can, can, get, can know it better than Vrabel can know it. And, by the way, jumping back around, because I'm going to be all over the place on this, I have to go one more shot at Taylor Lewan. He's got Chandler Jones going after him. So I'm looking at the quickest sacks in all of the NFL in the first week. The quickest one is Chandler Jones at 2.2 seconds. It's a half a second faster than any other sack through all 30 teams that have played so far. I don't know if I can get out of three point stance in two point two seconds. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, really. Yeah, this isn't he got beat in two point two. No. This is Ron Tannehill goes on down. The Oof. You know what that means? That means we didn't get any part of his body on Chandler Jones. Yeah, put that disappointing part of your body on him or something. I mean, <laughs> golly. Just stand in yeah, front of please, it. Please, I know Bradley has this quote from Mike Vrabel oh, about yeah, Julio gotta... Jones right here, and it is not as polite as Parker made it out to be. Uh, all right, Parker, I'm going to read this quote, and then I've got a question for you as the season ticket holder. Mike Vrabel, uh, Vrabel says of Julio Jones's penalty, that would fall – into the category of doing dumb shit that hurts the team. I think I, that Vrabel's got to be careful here. I know that he's trying to be honest, and he's probably emotional with that answer. But uh, do you think that this is teetering on the brink of Julio shutting down, which he's admitted to doing in Atlanta, versus does this motivate Julio? What do you think? I think it motivates him. I mean, he, dude, he's a first ballot Hall of Fame. You know, I mean, it, it, he's not going to just come sign with a new team and be done. Again, this team is not that bad. If you want to try to look at it half full, I'd almost rather get just absolutely spanked, beat down like this, than to lose by seven. At least maybe now they're like, holy crap, we've been talking all offseason how great we are, how great these weapons are, how all this stuff is. Maybe they're now, oh, my God. We aren't that great, and Vrabel's trying to light the fire, that fire. I mean, Blake's told me many times, uh, you know, the first tee box is not the place to start practicing golf. Nope. You got to go out there and play. This felt like their first full time to quote-unquote practice, but it was a little too late mm-hmm. this past Sunday. Yeah, man. I, I feel so bad for the 67,000-plus that showed up to watch a giant – flaming pile of shit on the field <laughs> which that's the product i mean let's be first off i'm taking nothing away from the arizona cardinals and kyler murray they they showed up to play they did titans did not they did not and we had one professional team out on the field and we had one group of assholes that didn't want to practice together all offseason 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's it. I, I, I'm at least I'm hoping that's it. If not, you know, in my head at first, I was like, well, they didn't play last year. Well, they didn't play preseason, but they practiced together. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not even practicing together. This is the first time the offensive line has been together. Um, you could tell. <laughs> yeah, you could. I, <laughs> Tannehill was bad, y'all. I I got a little bit of a, a tiff with somebody on Twitter on. It was not just the offensive line. At some point, Tannehill's got to throw the ball instead of getting crushed. I know 2.2 seconds is ridiculous, but at some point, you got to when you're getting sacked, you got to hold on to the ball. You know, you've got to you've got to hit an open receiver. Tannehill tinted one pass beyond 20 yards the entire game. He had he no time. Like, no time. No, he had no time. He he really didn't. But they can scheme stuff up like that. And if you want to jump on the offensive coordinator like everyone's doing, I believe every single. First down play in the first quarter was a run. I mean, that's not predictable at all. <laughs> I, at the first quarter was over when the horn sound. I looked over at the jumbotron to look at the total yards, and it said negative one for the Titans. I did see at one point it said Henry nine rushes for seven yards. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. as bad as it was, it's actually a. A little bit impressive that he had 17 carries for 58 because those were 58 hard yards that he got. I actually don't blame Henry on this one. No, there's I, nothing to no blame chance. him for. I mean, he he literally had hands on him when he was receiving the ball from Tannehill. You can't make people miss if you don't have the ball yet. Just, just to hate on uh, Terry Wan a little bit more. <laughs> he had he faced 40 passing block situations. Of those 40. He put uh, gave up pressure on his quarterback five times, and this guy's one of the highest paid left tackles in the league. You just cannot do that. I, I just think, hopefully, going forward, this is going to change everything that's about this team. Taylor one being awful, Tannehill being awful, the whole line being awful, the defense, well, the defenses—that's another story. But even this, like, you did, who led the team in receiving? Do y'all know? It, it wasn't. It was the guy that's been practicing all year. It's Chester Rogers. It He's is. The guy that's been practicing with Hill. Yes. Old Chester. Also, oh, this just makes me sad. According to Pro Football Focus Next Gen Stats, if you look up the amount of separation that wide receivers have um, to their uh, defender on a pass, league average is 2.87 yards is what their separation is. The highest Titan with the most separation, Anthony Oh, no. Not the tight that, end. That 3.9 yards of separations. A.J. Brown was 2.3 and Julio was 2.1. All I know is that Chandler Jones made Taylor the one look fat and slow. <laughs> I mean, you can call it ACL. You can call it whatever, man. I mean, dude, you have an entire year, basically, to heal your body, which I'm assuming being a younger guy, you can heal well. You got, you know, millions of dollars to find, you know, special ways to hyperbaric chambers and all that crap to make yourself heal faster. So the only other thing for you to do is to work on your, your speed, your agility, your form. Uh, have you just been working on your podcast too much? I don't know. All I know is that Chandler Jones had two or three steps before you even got your fat ass moving. So, yep. I mean, uh, I don't know what their kicking situation is going to be. Sorry to change the subject. No, I mean, I it's like. it's an issue. It's a, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, a groin injury for a kicker is a big deal. I mean, I don't even know how good Ficken was going to be in the first place. But I, I, He was good in the preseason, good in practice. I was actually kind of excited about him. Uh, and maybe I missed this since I was out of town. I just always thought they had Guskowski on speed dial. I did, too. <laughs> they should. I honestly did, too, because I know he lives around here. He does, and him and Bra- Brable are good buddies. I-, I honestly thought that that was just kind of the, kind of the thing. And then, uh, yeah, I-, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to do. What do they got? Gary Anderson? Al Del Greco? <laughs> what are they going to line up? Morton. Morton Anderson. <laughs> oh, Ned Dam. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, one game does not – make the entire season i still as the jags fan i believe that the titans are the best in the afc south but uh i mean the fact is is that 
the Titans, the Jags, the Colts. They're all 0-1, and, and then there's a little team in Houston, Texas. I can't believe we're That's even having this conversation. Right? I really can't. 1-0 and at the expense of new head coach Urban Meyer and rookie quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Boys, they fall 37-21. to It wasn't even that close. This game was over in the first quarter. Um, I brought up the stat. I said, look. Number one drafted quarterbacks in their first NFL start in the last 25 attempts were 420 and one. You can go ahead and make that 421 and one now. So, but uh, the question for this game is where does the real blame fall? I, I'll tell you what I saw. I watched every play of this game. I saw a coaching staff, not, not just Urban Meyer, but I saw a coaching staff that had that. Deer in the headlights look. They were getting plays in to Trevor Lawrence with six seconds to go on the play clock. Oh, my goodness. See, I, okay, I didn't, I'm going to admittedly, I didn't watch any of this game because after the Titans game got so bad, I didn't even want to watch football. Yeah. So, I, this is, this, that sounds atrocious to he me. He was literally in the huddle with, with, with his teammates and he's standing there. He's like, I can't even like, say the words fast enough to get us up to the line. I got, I, said, I got no idea. I still got shoddy yelling in my ear because he can't figure out which play to play. Run. It's a, it was a bad look, man. When you go out there and, and their defense is horrible again, of course. I'm watching that. Oh, God, yeah. Making Tyrod Taylor look like somebody. Tyrod. This has got to give you a lot of hope, Parker, for the Titans in the future. Ty, Ty, you know, the thing I had the most issue with this, I know this is going to shock you, but it's Urban Meyer. Why, <laughs> why does Urban Meyer love his old – I mean, I'm just going to say it. I mean, we, we brought in people, he's done stuff. Why does he love all his old players? Carlos Hyde is done. Why are we not using James Robinson? We are running the ball more with Carlos Hyde. James Robinson. Every single rush, positive. Carlos Hyde hit 22 percent of the back in, in the backfield on all his rushes. I, I just don't understand. They had a guy last year that's a top. He's on a rookie contract. He's cheap. He's on. A, he's a top five running back last year. And then what they give it to him five times? He's not even really technically on a rookie contract. He was a street free agent, undrafted. <laughs> I mean, it's cheaper than cheap on that guy. I just don't understand why they hate this. They 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 draft Travis Etienne, which I, I'll, I, we all know what I think about drafting running backs in the first round. Uh, and then they, I don't know why they hate him so much. I don't understand what he's done to be uh, cast out. I know he wasn't picked up by this coaching staff. I know it was a previous regime, but the dude is good. It, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me of what the decision making process is going to that. Carlos Hyde played on three teams in three years. He was good. Yeah, and one like, of them was the Jags previously. <laughs> I, I just, I don't even know what to say to it. I just don't under, I don't understand it. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, I will say I, I watched some highlights of, I didn't watch the whole game because I was driving back, but uh, from the game, but what I saw of Trevor Lawrence, he looked like, um, I'm not trying to call him Peyton Manning, but it, it reminded me of Peyton Manning's initial season. I thought I saw somebody else say that too. Where he makes like some unbelievable great on the real deal passes, but then like a really, really bad one. But so it's kind of all over the place. It's either really, really good or really, really bad, which is good. I mean, you want that, I guess, from a, a, a rookie, not just, um, you know, being <laughs> completely bad because he does show some likes in there. What they don't want, and I'll let you get to some stats, what they don't want is they don't want their quarterback to be throwing 51 times in a game. So uh, they definitely need to balance that out. James Robinson is not the problem. The problem that I saw was in the first quarter, James Robinson rips it up the middle for 12 yards. Holding. Comes back. James Robinson, left tackle. 13 yards. Holding. Got two plays, 25 yards erased from the memory, erased from the stats. But I will say, before Blake reads out some stats, um, Blake mentioned some concern with this offensive line. Uh, Trevor Lawrence dropped back to pass 53 times. He got 51 passes away. He only rushed once, 
and he was only sacked once. Um, I put some of that credit, I guess, with the with the mm-hmm. offensive line, but with Trevor Lawrence and I believe his savviness probably well beyond his years. He's only 21 years old. But to get that quick passing game out, that that, hel- that had, had to help out his offensive line there in those statistics. What did you see? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the stats I was going to cite. I, I mean, it was a big concern for me was how often they were going to be able to keep him upright. Um, but like you said, I mean, having the gum your rookie quarterback, drop back 51 times – Stand there and have, you know, four or five guys running full speed at him trying to take his head off. Man, I think we got to come up with a better strategy here, coach. I mean, come on. I feel like we're, I mean, this is the kind of, I mean, this is inevitable for almost any rookie quarterback. I think Trevor Lawrence probably handled it about as well as anybody could have. This is his, did I hear right that this is his first regular season loss ever in his entire life? Including high school. Including high school, yeah. So, I mean, it. he's going to learn from this. I saw some things that, that looked pretty nice, and, and, and he seems to have some poise. I mean, he's always had that. Uh, I just question, can, can this coaching staff not screw with him? You know, are, are they going to put him in situations where he's going to have to drop back 50 times a game? I just want them to get the play in. Well, well I know, man, but I mean – it, it's it's it calls into question everything that the coaching staff is doing right now because I mean it's why are you not running the ball more with a rookie quarterback? Why are you putting your defense or your offensive line who's already kind of not that great at pass pro, admittedly, you know, get those big fat boys moving forward? You know, why are we why are we asking them to protect this guy when we know that they're not that great at it? I don't know. I, I I'm with you on the coaching staff. They've got to get better. Just just looking at the stats, you telling me that they're not getting plays in until six seconds left on the play clock? I mean, good grief. What do you expect from a rookie quarterback? I don't have it. I, I do have your uh, comparison, though, Parker. Peyton Manning's first game versus Trevor Lawrence. Mm. Peyton Manning, 302 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. He was sacked four times. 42 yards was his longest pass with a rating of 58.6. Trevor Lawrence, 332, three touchdowns, the same amount of interceptions at three. He was sacked once, 41 yards was his longest pass, and had a rating of 70.1. So, I mean, hope is there, right? I mean, if you yeah. want to keep comparing him to yeah, I one think of the greatest the, of all What this season's going to look like. I mean, I think we're looking at a 29 interception season, but uh, we're looking at what this game was times 17. And I do think credit to Lawrence. I, I think it was more of him, the, him being sacked once was more of him getting away than it right. was his line. His line got he got pressured sixteen times out of those fifty-one dropbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and <laughs> excuse me. So I do think a lot of this comes back to coaching staff. But guys, we talked about this. This Houston team is they're awful. They're awful. But these. This is the oldest team in the NFL with a bunch of vets on the team that are playing for another contract, and they knew this was their opportunity to go out and to get a win, put something on tape that they've still got it, and I really, really think they showed up for it. Well, there's no questioning it. They they, they did. Um, the only other thing I've got to say about this is, Houston, beware. The Jaguars started 1-0 and last year and finished 1-15. and that could be your fate. I think that's a <clears throat> a big. I think that's a, a, a chance of that happening. This team's going to be bad. I picked them to win two or three games. And what happened with uh, DJ Shark? I know he had twelve uh, targets, but he only caught the ball three times. Were they? And I, again, I did not see every pass Lawrence through. Were they drops? Were they misses? Or is it just kind of thrown away? Uh, he had a few drops, yes, but uh, he did catch a touchdown pass. What do you see there, Blake? I got three for 86 and a touchdown. But he did have some drops, though, Parker. Mm-hmm. It, I don't have targets. He's coming off of a hand injury, so I don't know if that had something to do with it. Um, what I've been looking for from DJ Chark is his body language, to be honest with you, because it's 
and it's not maybe it's not just him, but there are a couple of players on this team that when things go south, which happen often with the Jags, mm-hmm. they start. You know, you can kind of see it. They kind of have that head down, or they're acting like, "Man, the whole world's crumbling over mm-hmm. over one bad play, one bad rep, one drop." I mean, that's the thing I've been watching with Shark. Um, I'm starting to watch that a little bit with Miles Jack as the linebacker, but um. If you just look at his line, it looks pretty productive with the over 80 yards and a touch. But he did have some drops. Yeah. Your boy Marvin Jones had a touch as well. Yeah, my boy. Hey, uh, I love me some some Marvin Jones and some LaVisca. LaVisca Chanel. Yeah, LaVisca hey, was used big, often. He was. I, I, not, I think he should be. I, the biggest thing I took away from this game, and I, touched, I mentioned this to you earlier, Bradley, as I think it's hilarious, is that Danny Amendola is still in the league. <laughs> we just made him a pro bowler. <laughs> I, I, honest to God, thought well, he'd been gone for three or four years. And I, I saw him catch that touchdown. I was like, "What is that? A di- is that his son?" No, no jeez, that yeah, was no. That was old. That was old, Danny. I got um, nothing else to say about this. I mean, it's. I said it was. If the Jags can't win this game, what game will they win? They may not be favored again until they play Houston again way later in the season. They'll win that one. We had we also had that battle of uh, Alabama quarterbacks. Tua and the Dolphins go on the road and get a win, seventeen to sixteen, in New England. All three of us thought it'd be a close game. Uh, kind of the turnovers, the fumbles, kind of didn't did them in here. I think it was a very good first outing by Jones. Yeah, I think so. Um, they had some penalties that kind of did them in too. I think. You mentioned the fumbles. Um, what was uh, what was Max line looking like? So he was 29, 39, 280. Man, that's pretty good. Pretty efficient. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty damn good. good, actually. Damian Harris had him a good game, had 100 yards. Um, yeah, I mean, just I, I think, you know, it's a good learning opportunity for Mac Jones there to, to learn how. I mean, he, he knows. He knows how important turnovers are. Uh, in a game that's close like that, but I mean in the NFL, most games are going to be close, so you got to you got to really pay attention to that kind of stuff. Mac Jones was good. Uh, he did exactly what he needed to do. I, I think he outplayed Tua. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Damian Harris lost this game for the Patriots, but that fumble at the end of the game, they should have won this game. Uh, I know I picked Dolphins, but that's just really how it should have worked out. Yeah, all three of them. Mm-hmm. And, and they were open. Uh, well, I was talking about de- average. How how many? how much people are open the receivers are. And Mac Jones has got people running around out there wide open. Born, his average uh, open by 4.6 yards. Jacoby Myers, 4.6. Hunter Henry, 4.2. Um, Johnu, 3.9. And I'm looking over here at – Johnu. Uh, Johnu, yeah, yeah. I, I started cheering Johnu, by the way, at the Titans game. <laughs> uh, and I'm looking over here at – the Dolphins. I've got Mike Isecki open by 1.1 yard. Albert Wilson, 1.1. Devontae Parker, by 2.1. So, <clears throat> yeah, the defense showed how up. Did, how did Waddle do? Do you have his number? 3.6. That's not bad. No, that's not bad. That's really good, actually, if you're saying two point something than average. Yeah, the average is 2.8, and he was 3.6. That's good. And Smythe was 4.2. The tight ends tend to be a little bit higher because they're covered <clears> by you know, slower people. But, um, I thought Mac Jones looked great. Yeah, absolutely. There's hope. And I, I don't think two looked bad either. No, uh, nah, no. It's just a close game. Close game. And he doesn't even have. Well, you got to think too. He's down. Maybe his best receiver. He'll yeah. Be back next week. Yeah. We had another close game <clears throat> on Thursday night. Tampa Bay, the defending champions, held on, or actually came back and won thirty-one to twenty-nine. But gentlemen. I think the real story of this game was the return of Dak Prescott. Dak is back, folks. Uh, I, I mean, look, he – I was shocked. I mean, you look at the numbers that he put up. It, it, it's, you know, 42 of 58, 42 for 58, 43 58. yards. 58. That's a lot of dropbacks. It is a little concerning to see – Zeke with 11 carries and 33, a whopping 33 yards. Um, But 
it is impressive to see that Dak is back and he's having some success. He did throw the interception, but it's hard to deny that. Uh, I mean, he pushed the he pushed the Bucks to their to their limit for sure. Parker, were you more impressed by Dak Prescott's play or Tampa Bay's defense? Is that that bad? I mean, which one surprised you more, the Dak explosion or Tampa's secondary just garbage? I don't know that they're garbage. I think Dallas is just that good offense. Well, they could be. You might. Yeah. I mean, they are loaded, y'all. They got they, their three receivers are just absolutely phenomenal. And I, I think Zeke not having a great game is fine. Uh, he faced more eight and nine man boxes than anybody in the league this this week. Every time he touched the ball, 56 56 percent of the time he touched the ball, he had an eight or nine man box. So good luck with that, especially against that that line. And this game, while it was close. I don't think it's as close as we're looking. The Tampa Bay had three more turnovers than Dallas, and Dallas gave everything they could. Dak threw for over 400 yards. I believe the only quarterback to do that this week. And they still lost? I mean, I'm, I'm watching some pretty questionable coaching decisions mm-hmm. during that game. I'm watching a coach <clears throat> have – a guy that just missed a 31-yard field goal straight to the left. He's trotting him out there for, what was it, a 60-yarder? And <laughs> just giving Tom Brady the 50-yard line? That? What in the world? My God. Made no sense. I, I just – I mean, Bradley and I talked about it earlier, too. I mean, you talk – this was two teams that – talking about establishing run. That, that didn't happen no. in this game. You got two quarterbacks that both dropped back 50 times. So, I mean uh, – a, you know the traditional, you know, thought process of establishing the run just did not show its uh, rear its head in this game. T- Tennessee's a lot like Dallas. The balls and the da- Cowboys are the same. Just take the over and feel good about it. Uh, <laughs> that though is really, I mean, he's he's good. I mean, it's really fun to watch watch him. And y'all mentioned the coaching. There's a reason why McCarthy in Vegas is the favorite. For the first coach to lose his job this year. <laughs> I feel that's a real thing. I think you're right. And I'm glad for the Cowboy faithful that their quarterback looked pretty good. I mean, yeah. it's I feel like at the beginning of the game, maybe it was a little timid. The balls were kind of arched more, yeah. floated more. Maybe he didn't follow through all the way through. But as the game, as he warmed up, as the game warmed up, looked a lot better. But uh, guess who didn't look good in Jacksonville this weekend? Mm. Boys, it could be the shocker of the day. Jameis Winston brings his team to Jacksonville, and Aaron Rodgers forgot to play. 38 to 3. Yeah, I am here to personally apologize to Jameis Winston. (laughs) He absolutely shoved in this one. He didn't get the over under uh, of four, was not on interceptions, it was on touchdowns. Wow. Who would have thought? Five touchdowns. 14 of 20, 148 yards, very efficient. Did what he had to do, used his tools around him, Alvin Kamara. How many picks? No picks. He he managed this game really well. You know, you got a lot of people asking, was Drew Brees really that good, or was it a product of the system that's there in place? I think Drew Brees was really good. I think 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 it's probably both. (laughs) You know, did y'all hear Drew Brees' comment? It was so funny uh, for the game. He was talking about, he's like, to talk about the Saints, he's like, you know, they've had a real problem in the last few years of throwing the ball downfield, and they finally got someone that can do it now. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> but, hey, but, go ahead there, Parker. I will jump on the Jameis Winston hate train then. Boom. So, five touchdowns, right? 148 yards passing. It's the only time in the history of the NFL someone has thrown for five touchdowns in less than 150 yards. It is not going to happen again. This was – a fluke. He is going to be Jameis from Tampa Bay. He's going to, he's going to be fun with, uh, you know, fantasy, three touchdowns, three interceptions. I just don't foresee how this can – I mean, we've got too much of a sample size. We've got four-year sample size on Jameis. This isn't him. This was Sean Payton with months to repair that just had him dink and dunk, and, and they did have one long deep pass that looked great. This was more of a uh, – Green Bay's defense didn't show up, I think. So this I just do, 
not think that this is James. So you think this was a Packers loss? Is what you think? I, I do think this is a Packers loss. I want to point out to everybody, and my NFL prediction show prediction was is that Aaron Rodgers was going to pack it in this year for the Packers. Ooh. And, and I think Parker and I went opposite and yeah. said that he was going to give the middle finger. I said that uh, 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 th- he sucked. He was benched. He looked bad, really bad. And honestly, I can't imagine Aaron Rodgers looking that bad when it's not if it wasn't on purpose. Uh oh, uh oh, Parker, he just called him out. I believe on purpose. Let me, let me tell you why Aaron Rodgers is going to be just fine. <laughs> One, Aaron Rodgers went into last year studying like every throw he's ever thrown, fixing all this stuff, big studying. This offseason, he's in Hawaii. Everybody knows all the offseason stuff. I don't have to go down that road. So he, he really hasn't had a lot of time to, to practice. Two, Aaron Rodgers played last year in Florida also against Tampa. Lost 38-10. to 10. Still won the MVP. If you actually take his statistics from that game to this game, they were worse last year than this game was. Green Bay, this is a really weird stat, y'all, but Green Bay does not play well down south. They, Especially Florida. This year, they go Jacksonville. Stink. Last year, Tampa Bay. Stink. The two years before that, they didn't play in Florida, but their two most southern games those two years, Carolina and Atlanta, Stink. Big fat egg. I don't know why, but for some reason, when they go south, they're not good. I feel sorry for the team that has to play Green Bay next week because whatever the line is, it's not high enough. I believe it's a Monday night game. Oh, yeah. Aaron Rodgers is packing his bags. Oh, no. I got it right here. The Detroit Lions at Green Bay. Currently sitting at a 10.5 point favorite. I might get on that right now. But uh, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers did quit in that game. I believe he started to, to play well, you know, or tried at the beginning. I'm not saying he just threw the game. I will say that second interception was him just giving up because he does not miss. He went deep over the – didn't even look off the safety, overthrew his guy by like 20 yards. It looked like a punt. It, to me, it was – we're down by three touchdowns, four touchdowns, guys. I just – let's get out of here. I'm done. Uh, he absolutely, on that last play, gave up. Guys, quitting is a habit. That's all I'll say. Hmm. Uh, uh, the Saints, though, I do believe, lost Margaret Flattimore, their big-time cornerback, with a thumb injury in that game. I don't know how long uh, he's going to be out, but I know he's going to have to have surgery. So that's something to watch for the defense. And you you called it out in the preview show too. Um, they were looking for cornerback help in in the off season. They they came knocking on the doors of the Jags, asking about Henderson. Other teams, I mean, they already knew that cornerback was an area of concern, and now you take their best corner out. That is something to watch. They're going to Carolina, and one of Parker's favorite bounce back teams with Sam Darnold, the Panthers. There you go. But we'll preview uh, Thursday. <clears throat> a little look ahead. We got the uh, an awesome NFC East matchup. The New York Giants at the Washington football team. It won't be Fitzpatrick, fellas. He's hurt again. Yep. They go. They're going with Heineke. Uh, the leading rusher for the New York Giants is not Saquon Barkley. It's Daniel Jones. 27 yards. <laughs> That's their leading rusher after week one. What a weird week for football. I just think it's weird. Just my opinion. I, I mean, I got to go home team, Parker. You got any quick thought about it before we shut it down? I, I don't really, honestly, no. I'll shut this one, I don't really have a thought on it. I, I would say the Giants actually looked – Okay, you, Daniel Jones could be good if he wouldn't turn it over more than anybody in the history of football. <laughs> like, it, it's unbelievable the, those Daniel Jones things that he does. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't hate Heineke, honestly. I, I would probably go Washington on this, but I don't love it either way. Hey, no picks last week for Jones, but uh, I guess he I fumbled did. it though. 
He did. I'd go with the home team and, and just a win, but I'm not betting on it. All right, guys. Well, that was a reaction show. It's a little bit hotter in this room now. I'm, I'm, I feel better, though. I'm I got stunned. it out. You know, I got it out. Uh, anyways, thank you guys for joining us today on our reaction show. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at DDS Sports Talk. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Email us at the Dadco Podcast at gmail.com. Got any parting thoughts, Parker? Yes, Josh Allen, 30 of 51. The real accuracy, Josh Allen showed up and lost to a bad Pittsburgh team. Newberry. The Jags are one game back. And the one thing I'll leave you with is Titans. I don't know what it was that happened there, but I do know one thing. It's time to tighten up. You guys be well.